Hi Ninja Nerds, in this video we're going to be talking about heart sounds and heart auscultation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and comment down below and check out our website, ninjanerd.org. Let's get started. All right, Ninja Nerds, so heart sounds. We're going to be talking about them today and what we need to really focus in on is how does the heart make these sounds. It's not necessarily the heart that's making the sounds, but it's the valves inside the heart, particularly the valves closing. So let's back it up a little bit and quickly what valves we have in our heart. So we know we have four valves and we watched our structure video before and we understand that within the heart there's four chambers, there's four valves. Within the valves they can be categorized into two different types. We have the atrioventricular valves and the semilunar. Let's focus in first on the two atrioventricular. So we know that atrioventricular means that it's going to be the valves between the atria and the ventricle. So we have the right ventricle and atria here and the left atria and ventricle here. And between them are our valves that divide them between the atria and the ventricle. So on the right side, we have, what do we call this valve right here? The one that is between the atria and the ventricle on the right side of the heart. Do you remember? This valve right here is what we call the tricuspid. Okay, and then on the other side, we have the left, atria and left ventricle and the valve between those two we're going to put in pink here is our what? We call it the mitral. Good. So we have our two atrioventricular valves. Those two valves group together as one and they can make a heart sound. So when these valves close they make a sound and what's that sound that we are going to be using in this term or in nursing in, in the medical field? We use that sound as known as our S1 sound. And you've also probably heard it as our lub. Okay? So, the mitral and the tricuspid valve are two atrioventricular valves close at the same time. And when they close, they make this S1, this lub sound. And then we're gonna move on to our two semilunar valves. And our two semilunar valves are the valves that connect our heart chamber to the rest of the circuit that it runs through. So we have our right side of the heart, and our right side of the heart has the right ventricle pushing blood out through the pulmonic trunk. So we know that this semilunar valve here is our what? Our pulmonic. And then on our left side, we have the left atria through the mitral, through the left ventricle, and out into our systemic circuit through the aorta. We know that this valve is the aortic. And you're like, Kristen, we already know this, we already know the valves. I know, I know, it's just the review. So now we know that the semilunar, pulmonic and aortic valves, they're gonna close at the same time. And the, the sound that they make is our dub, and we call that our S2. So just so we have an idea here, now what we're talking about, we're talking about S1 and S2. And remember, the valves make the sound when they are closing. So that raises the question now, why do valves close? What, what's going on? Why are our valves closing? Like, do they know how to close? Why do they close? The purpose of them closing, let's talk about that really quick, is to prevent backflow. Okay, and what does that mean? Basically, within the heart and within our body, we want blood beef flowing from the right atria to the right ventricle and out, left atria, left ventricle, and out, and not having any backflow. We don't want blood from the right ventricle going back through the tricuspid or going back through the mitral valve. We want them to be keep going through the heart. And what that has to do is we don't want unoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood mixing, and we don't want any type of issues with insufficiency uh, giving us issues with our pumping and our uh, workload, our cardiac output. So we're gonna prevent that backflow. And we have words, words that we're gonna be talking about, right? We have these words systole and diastole, and you know that plays a role in blood pressure but it also plays a role within the heart and what the heart is doing. So systole is the word that we're gonna use which means contract. Because when we talk about heart valves and we talk about the sounds, we're talking about particularly things happening right within the ventricles because it has to do with blood going in and filling and then going out and being ejected. So systole is the word that we're gonna use for contract and if you can't remember that, remember that the word contract comes from the word, or means the word systole, and the word asystole, when someone is asystole, they're flatlining, they have no heartbeat, right? That means they have no contraction, that's without contraction. So the word systole means to contract. And then diastole is our word for re relax, and you can remember that as unfortunate as it is, that if you die, 
you're kind of in a relaxed state, nothing's contracting, nothing's moving at all. So diastole means to relax. So our valves are closing, they're preventing that back flow, and we want to make sure that we understand how this all works. How does the S1 sound, that lub sound, the S2 sound, the dub sound, and the systole and diastole all work together? So right here in this little picture here, I picture it as a circle, we have a lot of information that we can get just from this. And these are the types of things when I take an exam or I take the NCLEX, you get a free piece of paper or you can write hopefully um, on the back of the test if you're still doing paper and pencil. You can write little things down that'll help you just quickly be like, okay, I, I remember this information, now I can go into this test confidently, with confidence. So S1, we know, what do we know from already this video? We know that the S1 is our AV valves, right? That means they're closing. We know that this makes our lub sound, right? And then we fill in down here, our S2, we know that this is our semilunar valves closing, and that's going to be our dub. And then our valves have to close to prevent that backflow. So when the blood is flowing in, it's going to go from the right atrium to the right ventricle, all right? So this blood is going to start flowing in. When it flows in, this blood starts to fill up, okay? So we're going from a low pressure to a high pressure, I mean a, a higher to a lower, because there's no blood in here. So from the right atrium to the right ventricle, we start filling. As this fills, the pressure starts to build, and this tricuspid closes, right? So we hear lub, boom, closes. So where does blood need to go now? If it's in the right ventricle and it, you hear lub, blood is now in the right ventricle, it needs to go where? It's going to go out through our pulmonic. So systole, how do we get blood out? We know that that means the word contract, right? So this is our contraction. And what is blood doing? If the heart is contracting, the blood is ejecting. Okay. Great. So we have filling of the, the ventricle. We have lub. We have this ejection occurring, right? And now we have dub. So we're going in this circle here. From dub, all of these valves now have closed, right? We have our semilunar valves closing. So what's going to happen now as this is all relaxing over here? This is all relaxing, so now we have, again, filling. We have ventricular filling, right? Because now we are relaxed. And if you just think about this little picture for a second in a nice little circle, you'll understand that S1, lub, systole, eject the blood out. S2, dub, and then we start filling again, diastole, back into S1. This is a nice depiction here of what is happening in the heart as our valves are opening and closing. Okay, But I'm going to show you another way that we can do that in a nice linear form with some pictures. All right, so we just went over that little cycle there that I showed you guys, and you're probably like, Kristen, what the heck? You're talking about these fillings and this, this S1, this S2 sound. I'm going to show you again the same thing, but in a little more pictorial type of um, diagram here. So in this heart here, we have S1, we go systole, S2, diastole. And understand that this is just going to keep going over and over as the heart pumps, S1, S2. So lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And what we're looking at here is we're trying to understand where the blood's moving, what the heart is doing, so that way when we have to identify murmurs and we're listening, we know what we're listening to, okay? So with S1, let's remember, let's just write this all down again. S1 is what? This is when our AV valves close, right? Valves, okay? And this S1 is the thing that we say lub with, right? And S2 was our semilunar valves. And this is our dub, right? And then from we have here, we have systole, right? And what did the word systole mean? So in this space here, we have a contraction. And what does diastole mean? Diastole means we have a relax. So the muscle here is relaxing, the muscle here is contracting. And we're going to be focusing on what's happening within our S1. So we have love, we have S1. So our AV valves here are closing because we're going to hear that doof, right? So let's grab, what are our colors here? Green and pink. So tricuspid, 
is closed, right? Mitral is closed, okay? And we have blood where, okay? Where is blood right now if the valves are closed? Because we, we did what? We filled our ventricles in. So ventricles are filled, blood needs to be ejected out, right? It can't go back through, hopefully, hopefully. It's not going back through the valves that it just came through because those are nice and closed, tightly shut. And we're gonna contract. When we contract, where is that blood going? Going out, right? It's gonna go into our pulmonary and systemic circuit. So it's going out here, it's going out here. And when this blood goes out of the heart, right? It's filling the rest of the circuits here. This blood is going out. We know what valves are now closed. Our pulmonic, right? It's closed. And our aortic. Our semilunar valves are now closed, which makes sense, right? So let's look at it again. We have this S1, lub. We go into systole. Our AV valves are closed, so we're gonna push that blood, we're gonna eject it out. As we eject the blood out, we hear S2, because now, once that blood has exited the heart, our semilunar valves close, and then we have to go in relaxation. So I drew the third heart here, so that you understand, we now have blood out of the heart, so what would be after our S2? We go back to S1, right? And when we go back to S1, we have blood from here filling into our ventricles, and as it fills, we get lub. And it's a cycle over and over again. So remember, S1, it's our lub, it's our AV. After that, boom, we hear lub, boof. We have systole, systole, which is our contraction, and that's when our blood is sitting in our ventricles. It's gonna get pushed out, so it's gonna get ejected. So we eject out the blood from here, blood is in the systemic and um, aortic circuit, so our aortic and semilunar valves is now closed. And then we have to have what? Filling here. We go back into filling. Right, makes sense. It makes a lot more sense if you understand this, because then when you start understanding where murmurs occur, if they're occurring between S1 and S2, or, be, or after S2 before S1, then you're gonna understand the type of murmur you have. So get this in, because it's only gonna make you understand murmurs better. But now, we understand at least S1 and S2, we understand lub-dub, we know that it's uh, either the AV valves or the, S, um, the semilunar valves. So now, let's learn about how we're gonna listen to our heart, right? So our heart, when we assess the heart, we're trying to listen to all these valves and we're trying to listen to these sounds. And we know that there's two sounds, but there's actually five different places that we can listen to these valves uh, in a very uh, a good, a good auscultation. So, we have our aortic our pulmonary, and pulmonic, right? These are two valves that we know. We have this thing here called Herb's point. And you're like, who the heck's Herb? What's his point? And then we have tricuspid and mitral. What we're looking at here are our five different areas that we are gonna auscultate so that we can assess our patient's valves and heart in each individual spot. So some people have mnemonics here for the ABE, A-P-E-T-M, right? So it's like all physicians earn too much or all patients they do something here, take medication, whichever way you like to remember it. I just remember that there's four valves and I just had herb in the middle, super easy. And we know here that what? Pulmonic and aortic make our S2 and our tricuspid and our mitral are our S1. Okay, so let's go through. We got this chart here to fill in. We got our aortic and we're gonna do our timing of our sound. We just know, we know, we just learned this, right? That the aortic, is a semilunar valve and that its sound should be heard on the S2. But where do we listen on the body? On our rib cage here, we have all these spaces here, right? We got these openings between each rib and what do we call those? Our intercostal spaces. And in those areas is where we're gonna try to listen with our stethoscope so we can hear each individual valve. The first one here, the aortic, we're gonna to listen to right here. And what is this spot here? Just so we 
Don't get confused. This is our right, so our second intercostal space, right sternal border. Okay, so that way you at least remember this. So it's the second intercostal space on the right sternal border. Fantastic. And we are listening and we should be hearing a nice loud sound on our S2. Perfect. And then we move across the chest. So let's do our pulmonic. Super easy to remember. You go from the right side to the left. Put your stethoscope in the second intercostal space on the left. So second intercostal space. Left sternal border. And we should be, get, uh, be hearing, again, an S2 sound. Fantastic. Great, wonderful. Now we're going to move into herb. Who's herb? So herb's point is the area and when we listen to the chest, we should be able to hear S1 and S2 equally. We should be able to hear it. It's the best spot to listen to both sounds at the same time. And what you can do as a nurse, if your patient is hooked up to telemetry or the EKG monitor, you can actually listen and look up, up there to see if all the sounds are correlating with the beats as well. So herb's point. Where is that? Super easy. We move down one intercostal space. And now we are listening on our third intercostal space of the left sternal border. And what should you be hearing here? You can hear S1 and S2. You can hear both. Fantastic. Awesome. And then you're going to go into the tricuspid, which is easy. Move down one more space, and we're going to be listening to where? If we move down one more, we're at the fourth intercostal space of the left sternal border. And we should be hearing S1. Fantastic. And the last thing we're going to listen to is our mitral. Our mitral is the little, little tricky guy. So what you can do on your patient, they're laying flat, you're listening to their heart, you can palpate along their, stern, uh, their um, clavicle, and you're gonna be trying in the midpoint. When you find the midpoint, you're gonna go down. One more intercostal space, you're gonna go to the fifth intercostal space. Midclavicular line. And you're gonna be listening for an S1. All right. So when you're listening to all these and you're listening to your um, patient's valves, you just want to make sure you're hearing amplified sounds. So on aortic and pulmonic, you should be hearing S2 nice and clear. Tricuspid and mitral, you should be hearing it on the S1. And sit there and listen. You want to make sure you're listening and you're able to hear it nice and clear. And then you can go to Herb's point and then see if you hear both equally. All right, Ninja Nerds, that is it. That is our video on heart sounds and auscultation. I hope it made sense. And as always, until next time.